tired of cutting wood. And we're off. You can see the mountains over there. Actually, the sun's just coming up. That's the town of Cochrane, going down the big hill, heading towards Banff. survey uh, before leaving on what people do when they leave their vehicles and uh, I'm leaving all the glove box and the console open uh, there's nothing in here and I even have a little sign on there no valuables engines disabled GPS so hopefully nobody has any nothing worse than finding your vehicle vandalized when oh, you're done pretty. now we're heading in towards uh, we're on the Cascade Road right now or no I would call this the Lake Minnewanka Road the east side it's a loop but we're on the east side because the west side is closed yeah views like this are available just by driving folks but they get way better if you hike first glimpse of Lake Minnewanka the first like we always think that wow the first guys who came here must have found this beautiful but I bet you they didn't and I'm sure they found it beautiful but not in the same way we, we find it beautiful because we're city dwellers but if you're David Thompson who's been traveling uh, on foot in 1770 for the last three years walking through wilderness yeah. you come upon this you just go oh okay right. a lake good Basic. I got water yeah another pumpkin spice latte yeah like they wouldn't have had the awe that we had. He, he, he was on a mission, actually. He was just out looking for ways to get across the continent. So, today this is awe-inspiring. Alright. Here we are. Well, taking our first break. Well, coming in, the camera's froze solid, like it's cold. I didn't even look at the thermometer, but we got in at 2.30, so it only took us two hours to get here, two and a half. But there was no taping coming in. Basically, it's a fire road that we're following and has been groomed for cross-country skiers. Look at our trail. This is where we went down to go get firewood. Well, look at how deep it is. It's a, it's a good foot, foot and a half. So we, we went in there and got some firewood. Bringing the, uh, the saw is a blessing. We can cut a lot of wood and I'm, I'm away from the fire and it's cold right away. It's uh, four o'clock, so we're gonna start setting up our tents.
So I believe this is the Cascade River. We came across this bridge. Got some water. Got a nice source of water. We're gonna. Is there room for two tents or? Yeah, right beside me, I think. Yeah. Give you a little tour. All right. Once again, we are set up. Somebody left chairs in the bush. Warming up my feet. Whew. So you didn't have to scrape too much to get bottom? No, not under the trees. It's not a lot of snowpack here. Heaven brought eggs. <laughs> <laughs> of course I did. All right, just walking around five minutes and my hands are cold. I'm gonna warm up again. Problem in the conditions like this is the fire, uh, you know, fire is energy and the coal just sucks the energy out of the fire, so the fire just keeps going down, so it has to be fed constantly. I'm gonna go warm up. My hands are cold, my feet are cold. Setting up is a lot of work. <sighs> All right, fire's going, Bro, water boiling. I won't spoil the surprise just yet, but Evan just did a temperature check. What's the temperature out? Uh, a balmy minus 20. Minus 20, holy smokes. Why do we do this? Because we're geniuses. <laughs> Evan and I were talking earlier about plans for the summer and we're going to do the redo the north boundary or the south not sure but you know after a trip like this uh, once you're accustomed to hiking in winter like this hiking in summer even if it's a long distance like seven days nothing, nothing. Yeah. 5 p.m. whoa when you get away from the get away from the campfire and she gets cold quickly we saw a bunch of uh, cross-country skiers today it's a nice loop a few of them were stopped and tatted with us and they all thought we we're crazy we are <laughs> I can see where this is going. <laughs> I can see where this is going. Bone marrow with uh, broccolini, a couple of nice little steaks, some, uh, what's in the ravioli? Lobster ravioli? Yep. And then a lobster nage, nice little sauce. Whew. And the grill flipped over, so we got this thing working perfect right now.
Look, you're a genius. You are a genius. There we go, Marty. Oh my God. <laughs> What's the temperature right now? Temperature right now is minus 24. That's it? That's Shit. it. Well, how about a casual surf and turf? Awesome. We have almost no camera lights. Wow. Wow. Okay, you've outdone yourself, Evan. This is like... Thank you. Wow. Oh. Oh, somebody's coming up. Hi! You don't want to see what we're doing. <laughs> What's that? We're eating a gourmet meal, surf and turf. Awesome. <laughs> we kind of expected that somebody would show up. What's your name again? Chris. Chris. Chris is skiing. He, you're, you're not sure. You're still on your. You're turning around, or you're going for the. Not sure yet. Not sure yet. Brave soul. Well, if you go forward and go to Stony and come back, we'll still be here. You'll have a place to warm up in uh, yeah. in an hour or so when you come back. Yeah. Full moon. Place is looking civilized. First day is in the bag. Look at the steam coming off of my breath. It is cold. Uh, minus 22. It was minus 24 earlier. So, using all the tricks possible here. Uh, hot water bottle in the bottom of the sleeping bag. Toque on the head. Two sleeping bags. Uh, we'll be okay. But uh, tomorrow is supposed to be uh, quite a bit warmer. We don't have very far to go, so. All right, good night, everyone. Well, it is 7.05. Um, I would absolutely not. Well, it is. Uh, it is 7.10 a.m. That was a cold night. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. We went to bed and it was minus 24, and I think if it cooled off, um, it's 
So even with these two sleeping bags, one for one with a rating of about 20 and one with 10, you know, I'm 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 providing 30 degrees Celsius of comfort. Well, when it's minus 25 degrees outside, that means that my sleep felt like it was five degrees. Well, five degrees Celsius is very cold. It'd be like sleeping. Uh, It'd be like sleeping outside in just a t-shirt uh, in uh, early May kind of thing. So not a very comfortable sleep. But made it through the night. Uh, it's 7 o'clock now. Going to go up. And uh, we were uh, diligent last night. We made sure we chopped a little bit of firewood and had some kindling so we can uh, start a fire quickly and start warming up. Sun will come up in about an hour and a half. And... Uh, tough part now the hardest part of the morning is actually getting out of this bag and uh, putting on the boots I can hear Evan Evan how's it going great great, great. <laughs> liar <laughs> uh, why the hell do we do this <laughs> that is a great question <laughs> Jeez, I, I joked last night I said if we ever figure out what somebody asked us this we we had a skier come into camp last night what was his name Chris? Chris or Ryan? Chris or Ryan from uh, Rocky Mountain Soaps. He's an analyst at Rocky Mountain Soaps. I, I, you know, they, they sell most of their soap online, and I guess he analyzes all the statistics and figures out which, uh, which scent is the most popular, that kind of stuff. But anyways, he asked us, he's like, why do you do this? I said, if I knew why, I'd look for a cure and stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's go make a fire. I've been messing around. I got us a fire going. Tell the viewers the good news. What's the temperature this morning? Uh, the morning news says minus 30. And by morning news, he means thermometer. We both brought thermometers. Man, my boots are cold. <laughs> Home roasted? <laughs> no. <laughs> But Seems good. to go through there pretty quickly, though. Yeah, it's awesome. Wouldn't you want it to soak a little bit longer? Or? No, you get espresso beans. I'm trying something new this time. I'm trying one of these uh, Nescafes. I usually bring uh, a hot chocolate and a separate instant coffee, but I saw... I saw these in the store the first time and I thought they were like a cream and I thought, well, that's no good. That's just going to freeze, but no, they are powdered. So I am highly confident that it is going to be good. <laughs> Look at us. If it wasn't for the fact that it's minus 30 when we woke up, this would be an absolutely fantastic setup. I mean, we have, well, somebody left two chairs in the bush. This is a very um, popular, I guess, trail for people who come and uh, cross-country ski. Maybe people left chairs so that they can come and have a fire and warm up, or who knows. But uh, when we were looking for firewood, we found these two chairs. So, I mean, if this was summer, wow, two chairs, sitting by a fire, drinking a coffee. Life just doesn't get any better than that. Cheers. But it is pretty cold right now. And uh, it is 8.15, so the sun will officially get up, but it's been, it's been light. You get enough sort of light to function a half an hour before sunrise, and you get enough light to function up to about a half an hour after sunset. So, but officially sunrise is happening right now. Ta-da! <laughs> more.
important to release some of this sequestered carbon. So ever since biology and evolution and the dis and the evolution of of uh, photosynthesis and the ability for organic plants to uh, synthesize carbon and turn it into lignins and make wood, the plant has been sequestering carbon dioxide. So the atmosphere used to contain 14,000 parts per million, if not more, of carbon dioxide until about a billion years ago when these photosynthesis appeared. And ever since, uh, the carbon dioxide has been sequestered mostly in trees. Of course, a lot of it is also absorbed in the oceans, ends up as uh, calcium carbonate at the bottom of the ocean. But, um, and, and in theory, if humans hadn't appeared on the planet, the, the carbon dioxide would continue to sequester itself to the point where it would become so low that plant life couldn't survive. Now, what slowed that down is the natural release of carbon dioxide that occurs through things like volcanoes, but also we know that the planet goes through cycles and warms itself up naturally. Uh, things happen with the sun and the planet starts to warm up. And when the planet starts to warm up, the oceans off gas and release carbon dioxide. But the whole mechanism, the whole trend for the last, you know, 500 million years has been that carbon dioxide has been decreasing. And, you know, if humans hadn't appeared, uh, it's quite possible that life on Earth would have disappeared in another 150 million years or so because we would have continued to, the planet would have continued to sequester carbon dioxide. So it's a good thing that humans appeared and released, started burning trees and, and producing hydrocarbons from the ground. Hydrocarbons are our old sequestered carbon that's been trees that have been buried under sediment. So I'm doing my part today to release a little bit of carbon dioxide and help the planet. Minus 20. I'm off to find the outhouse. <laughs> Sites. Mm. I got no choice, I'm going through the deep snow. Well, I didn't have to, I could have stayed on this ski trail. <sighs> yep, my morning business, this is the view. <laughs> hibernating, but uh, there is a risk of cougars at this time of year and bobcats, things like that, wolverines. Apparently a lady was killed by an emanciated, whatever the word is, a starving cougar a couple of years ago. She was cross-country skiing here and got attacked and killed, which is unfortunate. First time I've ever done my morning business while still wearing my snowshoes.
looking for a dead tree. Oh wow. Huh. Interesting. People have camped here. There's one, I think. Well, actually, technically, that's one right there. Perfect. I don't even need to cut it. Oh, that's big. That will be perfect. Thank you, whoever did this. Get back on my trail. <sighs> Benedict. Evan brought eggs. He slept with the eggs to keep them from freezing. He brought beautiful bacon from the restaurant. <laughs> English muffins. The only cheating he's doing is he's using a hollandaise sauce, but we got to give ourselves a few breaks while we're out here. Unfortunately, even though I haven't slept with the eggs, they froze, and so we'll have to rethink that. We're having a great bacon sandwich. Second night, check out the view. We came from over there, across the creek here. Look at the trail left by the Polk. <laughs> We're supposed to go up there, but I don't think we will. Tents are set up, where Evan's still setting up his tent. Look at that, firewood. Must have been some windfall or something and some warden came by and bucked it all up. Step one good. Good. This is beautiful. As long as it doesn't get windy. Yeah, if it gets windy, it's a whole different ballgame. 5.20 p.m. This is a gorgeous fire right now and if you see there whoever set it up before us found these nice river rocks flat rocks so this campfire is reflecting all the heat here so um, it's amazing that uh, even a fire like this when it's minus it's minus 20 outside right now is it is it minus 20 uh, Evan or yep. minus 20 
And so even in minus 20, the heat bubble from a fire like this, if you were depending on this fire to survive right now, you would have to sleep very close to it or set up a tarp or something to reflect more heat. But as it's set up right now, it's reflecting, you know, I'm, I'm in bare hands, been in bare hands uh, all evening. Bison ribs, mashed potatoes, yellow beets, and a nice reduction. How awesome is that? Night two, and right now the thermometer is showing minus 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, pleasant surprise when we got to this campground, there was firewood, so we got to, uh, wasn't, uh, you know, we ran out of daylight quickly, but uh, we didn't have to worry about collecting firewood. We just had to shovel a place for our tents and set up our tents. And then we had a great supper, uh, having made short rib, uh, short uh, bison short ribs with mashed potatoes and uh, yellow beets and he had a wine reduction which was absolutely freaking amazing uh, again we didn't document a lot of the trail on the way in it's pretty tedious it just follows a fire access road and the batteries keep dying on us so uh, I'll, I'll, but we we made a conscious decision today we're not going over the pass like we planned to the snow is just absolutely too deep we're lucky for the first few kilometers of the trail. Uh, it was groomed for cross-country skiers, but um, from here on in, it's not groomed, and it's more than two feet deep, so it'll be a, a struggle, and the river might not actually be frozen. Uh, we have to cross the river, so um, we're just gonna backtrack and go back to last night's campsite, which is all set up for us, so it's gonna be gorgeous. Uh, tomorrow, we'll go look at a cabin a warden's cabin on the way out and um, one small incident uh, haven't had a misfortune uh, his uh, boot his north face boot was a little too close to the fire trying to warm it up and it melted and he has a rip in one of his boots or a, 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 a seam came apart so we'll duct tape that tomorrow and uh, we'll, we'll be okay but uh, uh, another very 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 cold night. Alright, uh, good night everyone.